Okay, let's do that. So hello everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Miroslav and uh, I'm a web UI engineer here at SoftServe. And I'd like to start from the point of being a front-end developer. From my perspective as a React engineer, I'm familiar with React infrastructure, some CSS rules, preprocessors, uh, TypeScript and advanced uh, JavaScript tricks and basics. And there is the question, how we can improve our development experience? I started thinking so because I'm already familiar with browser.js in order and uh, with Node.js partially. Today, we will discover the modern web development and bring such technology as Next.js into your lives. <laughs> so let's start. Uh, the agenda for today is to take a look at uh, full stack development using Node, React, uh, compare Next.js approach with Row, uh, React, and meet the documentation for Next.js and discover some boilerplates. Afterwards, uh, we will preview the Vercel platform and see how we can manage the uh, continuous integration or some deployment or delivering uh, into our projects. And uh, then we will proceed with uh, no review for T3 stack and some technologies that you may already know and how they were transformed into a comfortable toolbox. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will finish with building our own application and uh, we will preview it also in Vercel, deploy it with uh, such bunch of knowledge. And let's go. Uh, what's next? Next.js is a server-side rendering framework that built around the React infrastructure. Uh, React is a, just a library, UI library with UI components, and uh, it operates mainly on the client side. This means that uh, it sends HTML to the browser, which is then re-rendered uh, with JavaScript. Uh, and this can cause a delay in initial load times as the user has to wait all the JavaScript to load before they can interact with the page. On the other hand, Next.js, which is a framework based on React, uh, it has some built-in server-side rendering. So this means that the server will render the HTML and send it to the client's browser, make the, making the page visible and user can interact with it much faster. So, also here, I'd like to highlight another advantage of Next.js. It's the built-in routing based on your file system. Yeah, that means just uh, that you can create different pages just by pasting uh, new folders, new pages or app uh, directory. It depends on the version of Next.js and the routing will be done automatically. Uh, maybe let's take a look at the code. That's the next uh, application uh, just out of the box. Here we have app, router, and here are our pages. So to add new pages, we can just uh, create new folder. Then we can add a new, for example, page.tsx file and add some JSX. Uh, that we already know as React developers. Okay, let's proceed. And uh, here are another. Here is uh, the another advantage is ACO optimization. So SEO is a crucial aspect of any web application. When it comes to SEO, Next.js holds an advantage over React due to its capability. So React.js operates on the client side, as I already told, as we all know. <laughs> and the application's content gets populated dynamically with JavaScript. Uh, CO boats can find, it, uh, can find it difficult to crawl and index our dynamic content, which can negatively impact SEO. Next.js SSR feature, which means uh, server-side rendering, uh, means that HTML is generated on the server and has been sent to the client. So the content of the page is already present here. Uh, 
uh, even before the JS, the other JS client we, we need to interact with uh, will be loaded. So this makes the content easily crawlable and indexable by search engine bots. And as the result, we have better SEO performance. Additionally, Next.js has another feature that improves SEO. It's automatic static optimization. So page without data fetching methods gets pre-rendered to static HTML. And it allows us to faster load the page, even better crawlability for search engines. So let's take a look at the project that uses Next.js. So here. And what do we receive in our network? On the page load, I'm receiving this content, which is fully preloaded HTML. This HTML is ready to be indexed by uh, SEO bots. And for example, if we'll take a look at uh, some React applications, we have only D with ID root. So this means that uh, the page is without content, which for bots is really misunderstood. <laughs> OK, let's go back to the presentation. The next feature is image optimization. First of all, Next.js allows us to serve the static files from your public folder directly to the client. Now let me go in this code. And we will see here, are, here is the public folder. Just do this. And uh, as you can see, we have some static files here. So if we will go to a browser and open our public folder means that it will be served to a root. So we can paste just next.svg and we will get this SVG on the client. So that's the beneficial of Next.js. Uh, additionally, it has some improvements on media files. So for example, images, and uh, it uh, improves the performance. One of the key benefits is uh, image optimization. And uh, Next.js provides automatic optimization for images, which includes resizing, optimizing quality, and serving them into modern formats like WebP and so on, uh, if the browser supports it, of course. And uh, the result, page loads faster. And uh, the second crucial feature is, to, is the built-in lazy loading. So Next.js image component includes a uh, built-in lazy loading feature. This means that uh, if user never loads, never, never scrolls down to a certain image, it will never get loaded. So that's uh, that's the idea of lazy loading. If someone doesn't know, and uh, let's go and check this image optimization because it requires some uh, conditions to be done. So first of all. It's the image component. So remember that you should use the image component to make it work. So with uh, with the default IMG tag, as we got used to in React, it will not work only with the image one. And for example, we can provide the quality, which equals sum of uh, some of percentage, for example, if quality will be more, it will be more quality. And if less, it will be, it will take some less time to load. <clears throat> so the last item, it's uh, just uh, a reminder for you that we, as we have this uh, static preloaded to our client, we can use just uh, absolute SRC without importing uh, Vercel uh, SVG uh, or some other images uh, 
from our from our folders as we got used to in React. <laughs> so instead of doing inverse cell logo import from or we can use alias here even but but it's better to paste just absolute path and do not overwhelm the code with uh, inference and so on. Uh, the next feature is API routes. So APIs and serverless functions are crucial components of modern web development and Next.js provides the integrated way to create serverless functions right in your project through API routes. So um, this is some island of uh, server server code I would say that uh, can be written in the same project as our front-end code, but uh, they run only on the server. This makes it easy to create endpoints, uh, fetch some data, handle authentication, create middlewares and uh, form submissions or any, any other server-side tasks, even accessing the database and so on. So let's take a look at them. Feature API routes. And here I have a route. I'm just expert in a get handler. So the naming is, is a key point here because if you will name something like uh, not get but get something, it will treat it as the method for your request and it will return us the error that it's a bad request or not uh, not appropriate method or something like this, because we should treat uh, just get post put and some, uh, some defined uh, methods. Mm, let's preview it. We'll go localhost. Here we can go API slash greeting greet. Great. And here I am. We are getting our JSON stringified, and it's okay. For example, we'll get some page is not working. HTML, yeah, HTTP error. <clears throat> Method not allowed. Okay. So um, uh, you can create a file inside your API directory and Next.js treats it as an API endpoint. So this is similar to creating a REST API endpoints, but instead of having uh, to configure a separate server from our front-end code, we can just paste uh, some API handlers into our API folder and it will be much, much better. <clears throat> and uh, just additionally, I would say that uh, this combination of API routes, serverless function in XGS allows you to write full stack application in both front end, back end in a single project, simplifying the development process and making it easier to manage and maintain. <sighs> yeah. And next topic is the SSR and SSG. In XGS, there are two main methods of rendering pages, server-side rendering and static-side generation. And here are the differences between. With SSR, the server generates the HTML for each request. When a user requests a page, uh, the server constructs the final page from scratch and uh, with the required fields, uh, of course, with the required data. And then it sends it to a client. So SSR is ideal for pages where data changes frequently and needs to be like in, change it in real time or dynamically 
for example, for dashboard or pages that display user-specific data, such as uh, dynamic routes, for example. Uh, but with SSG, the HTML is generated at build time, and uh, the page is created once, and after that, it will not change. So SSG is great for pages where data doesn't change frequently, like blog, posts, product listing, and some e-commerce where content updates infrequent. In conclusion, whether you should use SSG or SSR depends on your specific use case. Need to get the page on each request, SSR. Need to build the page once, SSG. Uh, okay, about mm, how we can handle some of SSR, SSG, and so on. Uh, it depends on our page props. So in Next.js, uh, the way is page uh, is rendered, determined by the data fetching method you use in your page. And there are three main methods. Get static props. Function is used uh, in static side generation. So that means that uh, function exports from the page. Next.js will pre-render the page, build the once, and uh, just using the props, you will pass from this get static props. And for get server side props, uh, it's also a function which is exported from the our page, but it used every time each request you are making, uh, you will get the new page total. So here I want to preview you another. Code boilerplate with next pages example, for example. Yeah. Okay. And I should change the template. Mm -hmm. Branch and you are in there to start our development server. Let's go to the local host. And it loads. Here I am. I have some server props. And let's take a look how it built in the code. Uh, do you see my VS code? Or <laughs> Yes, or yes. Haven't. Yeah, that's great. That's great because sometimes happens. <laughs> okay, so what is going on here? Here, I have declared the function get static props on index page, this one. So here I have some props, but it's uh, uh, it's not required that it should be the static data. You can access some, uh, make some requests. It's also the server side code, uh, access DB or something like this, and just uh, pass all the props into your page and grab it here and use it somehow inside your page. So this function is available only on pages level, not in the components, because it's a server code and uh, components use uh, mostly use client code. Uh, of course, uh, from Next.js version 14, we have some declaration for use client or use server, and uh, we can experiment with them. But uh, all these functions are available on a page level. And another page uses another uh, Method another props function. That's uh, that means that here is the SSR going on mm -hmm. with the same with the same props. Just the order is changed. For example, like here, we get that. Another one uh, 
feature of Next.js, it's the link element mm, because for routing, I used link imported from next link, not the anchor as we got used to, to do in React or who use uh, React Rotor, you may know uh, it's better. And uh, here we have some prep and the page loads much, much faster. Mm, okay. And just to give you uh, a few more interesting things, I will show you the build of our next application and uh, we will compare the static props to server side props. Here on our server pages, here I have index.html, which is our index.tsx compiled, and another.js, which is JavaScript page. So it prepares each time on each request to that page, it builds again and again and again. So that's the key difference between them. And uh, Let's go back to our presentation. Uh, so um, finally, <laughs> I can't let you go without more info about get initial props. So this is another method that can be used for SSR or SSG. So Next.js, um, it under the hood, it makes it work or uh, as SSR or SSG as a as he recognized such method. So it's better to use get server side props or get static props instead. That's just a legacy one. Uh, the choice between SSG and SSR depends on the needs of your page. And uh, yeah, so that's mostly, that's mostly it about server side rendering. Let's go next and uh, Yep, I want just to discuss the Learn Next.js, which is tutorial on their official documentation page. And that's an excellent resource for anyone wanting to uh, learn it. Uh, the tutorial is really interactive and hands-on. So meaning that you will be writing the code and building a sample application as you go through it. Uh, and it's uh, it's divided into several sections, some topics, each of them focusing on specific aspect of Next.js. And these sections uh, include topics uh, such as pages, data fetch, dynamic routes, and something some something that you should use in Next.js. Best practices, I would say. One of the key benefits uh, of this tutorial is uh, the coverage that. It uh, covers the basics and more advanced topics. Whether you're just starting out uh, or uh, you're already maybe familiar with Next.js approaches, this tutorial will be great for you. Mm -hmm. If you especially want to deep diver, uh, dive deeper. <laughs> so maybe let's let's check them out. I would preview it. So here we have our chapters, sections, and uh, especially React foundations are here. <laughs> so that's the idea of learn documentation, this, this learn bottom. Another topic is the templates. Next.js templates are pre-built projects uh, that you can use as a starting point for your application. They are designed and uh, built just to save your time and efforts by providing a ready-made structure and set of functionalities, provided environment variables and needed infrastructure done. Uh, so the things that are common in uh, many web applications. So there are template for various types of projects. 
from simple starter templates that only includes a basic setup of Next.js project to more complex ones that incorporate the state uh, only in, in, with, uh, with some big solutions, for example, commerce sites, blogs, and etc. cetera. Uh, I want to highlight just uh, a few of them. It's e-commerce starter, a template with pre-built e-commerce functionalities like uh, product listing, shopping cart, and so on. Uh, authentication starter is a template that includes user authentication using different strategies like JOT, OAuth, and uh, some more. For example, you can use Discord providers, GitHub providers, and uh, other other other. Uh, Tailwind CSS starter. That's the template that integrates the popular Tailwind CSS uh, library. Especially, I appreciate it. Mm, and uh, these templates can be a great way to kickstart your Next.js project, especially if it's your first time using the framework. You can also learn uh, a lot of uh, examples uh, to start some Next.js project, some, uh, see some best practices of writing the code, especially on the server side, if you are a starting full stack developer as, uh, as me, for example. And uh, just to see the whole structure of Next.js, how it should be. To use the template, you can just clone it to a template repository or use the create next step command with the needed alias. Maybe let's take a look also at the team, please. Miroslav, we have one question in the chat. Yep, sure. That it means, does that mean that eventually React.js is going to die? I mean, using just React, meaning frameworks like Next.js will be a new standard way of writing React. Uh, there are many ways. <laughs> about this idea because yeah for for some mm, for some cases next.js uh, uses mostly mm, the best practices but for example that's the approach of full stack web development uh, and uh, the way of how next.js grows it's it's about being more 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 and more back end so if we will see the latest versions, there are a lot of server codes, server actions, something like uh, something from backend developers populating with databases and so on. So uh, it means that uh, React will be alive uh, um, many years, I would say. That's just my, <laughs> my opinion. But the thing is that, uh, yeah, full stack development will be will be more suitable for many projects. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the templates. This page doesn't want to load. <laughs> Interesting. Sources, templates. Okay, it's loaded. So yeah, if we will take a look, there are a lot of a lot of examples. And uh, you can pick something you want. For example, that's Next.js Commerce. We can deploy, just do copy it our, to our GitHub or Bitbucket or other VCS. And view demo, of course. That's the demo feed. And that's the just the starter key, Kickstarter. Uh, you can improve, improve, improve it, build your marketplace like Shopify and so on. <laughs> Go next topic. Yeah, as I would say, next, uh, as I've already told you, Next.js Commerce is a high performance, flexible open source template for building e commerce sites. So, this is the production ready framework that you can use to get fully functional e commerce site up and uh, run it, run it really quickly, deploy it, and use it. So, here are some key features of Next.js Commerce template. Provider agnostic. Next.js Commerce is built to be adaptable with various e-commerce providers. 
So it uses the concept of integrations can be easily be done with different headless e-commerce platforms, uh, for example, big commerce, Shopify, Sailor, and more. High performance, of course, the template is designed with performance in mind, making use of Next.js capabilities for image optimization, incremental static regeneration, and automatic optimization like code splitting, dead code delimitation, and so on. A UI components, Next.js Commerce comes with pre-built UI components that are customizable, responsive, optimized, so the components are built using Tailwind CSS headless UI, which ensures that uh, everything will be accessible, easy to customize and maintainable. And internationalization, which is the key benefit of this template. So it supports multiple languages out of the box, many currencies, which is the great opportunity to create your own shop and uh, from Next.js Commerce perspective, that's it. Let's move on. And Vercel integration. So let's start. Vercel is a cloud platform that specializes in uh, deploying and hosting serverless functions, static websites, and Next.js applications. The integration of Vercel and Next.js offers us a seamless experience for deploying Next.js application to production environments, previewing it, separating by environments, and so on. Let me just show you. Here I should open the GitHub. Let's create a new repo. It's my new profile, repositories, and new one. Let's go our pages example. It remote origin goes first to that which origin Yep, here I am. That's our new repository. After that, I'll go per cell and create another project. New project, import git repository. So I am logged in as, uh, as a new account. So it has all my repos here. Next.js pages example, just now, deploy. And while it's deploying, I will just tell a bit more about Vercel. So it provides uh, features like uh, automatic deployments, instant scaling, continuous deployment with GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. So this integration allows us to focus on building application and without worrying about infrastructure, CICD, and so on. Additionally, Vercel offers features like uh, serverless functions, which can be seamlessly integrated with Next.js application to handle backend logic. And uh, this combination of Next.js and Vercel simplifies the deployment process and provides us a powerful platform for building and deploying modern web application. Uh, also, from some time 
I don't remember how far I go, but it's uh, Bristol becomes more than just a platform to develop. Also, it has some storages, key value databases, other 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 databases, just storage for blobs. So that's uh, that's awesome. And how is it going with the deployment? Okay, it's deployed. And I have my application done on this URL, which I can share to you. And it's already in the internet. <clears throat> Next topic, it's the analytics. Mm, because Vercel Analytics is a feature provided by it and uh, it offers insights, some data visualization tool uh, on helping the developers and teams understand how users interact with their development, uh, with their mm, product. And uh, a key feature of Vercel Analytics uh, include real time. so. Um, that means that uh, all the data is provided in the real time on user interactions. So user interacts on one side, you see the dashboard on another side. Uh, unique visitors are also previewed and uh, of course, of course, performance metrics because uh, you just see how, uh, how, many, how many users interact with your site, how it loads and it's great. Second one is the performance monitoring. It tracks uh, such performance metrics like page load times, time to first byte, and other key performance indicators just to help identify some bottlenecks, optimize the performance. Mm, the third one is the integration with Bursal deployments. So analytics is tightly integrated with the deployments, providing analytics data specifically to each deployed instance of any 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 of your application so to conclude Versal analytics offers us uh, as uh, developers really insights into how our applications are being used and performed enabling them to make uh, data driving decisions or improve user experience optimize performance and so on. Maybe let me just preview it. Here, I have analytics stuff. I can enable it for free trial. Currently, it's empty. If I will have a visitor. I should should see it in the real time. But firstly, uh -huh, okay, 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 okay. I haven't integrated it in our application, so yeah, that's we will see nothing. <laughs> but anyway, it's another one uh, provider for analytics, and that's really really great. Another feature is the preview mode. So first cells preview mode is a feature that allows us to create temporary deployments of my of our applications and preview some proposals. It's particularly useful for reviewing changes before they emerge in the main and go to production. And, uh, and here's how first cells preview mode typically works. So first of all, we have branch deployments. When developer creates a new branch, or pushes changes to an existing, the version will change and Versal automatically deploys a preview version of the application using the code from the branch. So that means it will be totally different uh, environment for previewing your changes. The second one is the temporary URLs. So each preview deployment gets its own unique URL making it easy to share the changes with the team members, stakeholders, uh, just for review. The third one is the isolated environment. 
Uh, preview deployments are isolated from the main production environment, uh, ensuring that changes will be run, uh, run and uh, reviewed only on the new environment to do not affect the production one. The third feature is the integration uh, with the pull request because uh, Versal integrates uh, some platforms like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and allows us to preview the changes from the pull request from the um, code being merged into production. Maybe let me show this on our GitHub example. For example, here I have uh, one branch and I can see this check status and that code is successfully deployed to a verse cell. So for example, if I will go and push a new branch, which Sure, this is GSSR. So this branch will take another pending deployment. And on Versal, I will see that um, there is a different deployment. So here I am with the unique uh, unique URL some hash here, and I can preview it after the deployment is done. Also, I'd like to highlight uh, the uh, custom configuration that because we can configure various aspects of preview deployments like environment variables, routing rules, deployment settings, also feature flags to each environment specifically. Uh, from from not, not so far ago, uh, the Vercel got the uh, possibility to overwrite, for example, launch directly feature flags. And that's a really useful feature, especially in your development, because <laughs> without feature flags, they are hard to uh, roll out something to production. And yeah. Here I am. It's built. Again, uh, it's protected. So if you are not authorized into my project, you can't access this one environment because it's, uh, it hides from the uh, unprotected access. Okay, and uh, here we have some toolbar just to comment or to see who is viewing that development somehow interact with the members, with the text stakeholders and so on. Uh, the next step is the serverless functions. So serverless functions are a cloud computing execution model where the cloud provider dynamically manages the allocation of machine resources and the code runs in stateless complete containers that are even triggered and fully managed by the cloud provider. So advantages of the serverless functions are scalability. Since the server resources are managed by the cloud provider, your application can easily scale or based on demand. Second feature is the cost effective because with serverless, you only pay for the computation uh, and uh, there is no charge when your code is not run. That's really, really nice. And uh, serverless functions offer us uh, as a developers a low maintenance approach to build and deploy applications, allowing us to focus on writing code, delivering value to users without worrying about anything related to infrastructure and so on. And uh, the next major topic is T3 stack. Uh, <laughs> T3 stack uh, typically refers to a modern technology stack that uh, uses TypeScript, Tailwind, TRPC, and Next.js. 
each component of this stack serves a specific purpose in web development. For example, TypeScript that we are already familiar with is a statically typed uh, superset of JavaScript that adds some optional static typing to the language. Uh, so it provides uh, some features like type checking interfaces, generics, map types, and other useful, powerful tools. The second one is the TRPC, which stands for a typed RPC. And uh, it's a framework for building type safe remote procedure calls in TypeScript. So TRPC focused on providing a developer friendly experience for creating APIs that are strongly typed for both server and the client. So that's the key feature of TRPC. And the next T is Tailwind CSS. Uh, it's a utility first CSS framework that provides a set of pre-designed utility classes for building user interfaces. So it allows us just to quickly style our markup by applying uh, some classes directly in the JSX and uh, writing some custom CSS rules. Tailed, uh, Tailwind CSS is really flexible, so we can configure for our needs and use it uh, on the different levels of components of the, our trees and so on. Let's dive a bit deeper. So as I previously said, uh, TRPC stands for typed RPC. And uh, about uh, the type safe procedures, First of all, it provides type safety. So it leverages the static typing capabilities to ensure type safety throughout the API development process. And this mean, that means that uh, boss and server and uh, client sites are using the code, uh, which is typed the, uh, in the same way for both of them. The second feature is the automatic code generation because TRPC provides uh, us tools for automatically generating TypeScript and to client-side code based on API definitions uses the same types. So and that's, that's the beneficial. Uh, third one, it's the framework agnostic. So TRPC is designed uh, to be a framework agnostic. That means you can not only use it, you can use it not only with Next.js, but also Express supports it or other, other <clears throat> backend frameworks. Or even maybe in our case uh, with uh, serverless functions. So that's great. And the final feature is the support because support of GraphQL, REST, so TRPC primarily focuses on RPC style APIs. And in the same, uh, at the same time, it provides the support of integrating with GraphQL's REST APIs. So this allows us to leverage TRPC alongside uh, existing API technologies or migrate to a fully typed RPC approach. The second T, Tailwind CSS. So Tailwind CSS, it's a library, it's a UI library that has some, some ready styles that you can use inside your markup, just adding some classes. So it focuses on providing low level utility classes that we can use to build our custom design quickly. And uh, here are some key features of Tailwind CSS. The first one is the customization. It's fully customizable, I would say, because it allows us to tailor the framework and suit the project specifically uh, to design requirements. So this can be achieved by configuring the default theme, adding some custom utility classes or maybe existing utility classes with some variants. So it's very, very great. The second key is the utility first approach. So we apply small atomic utility classes directly in our markup to style the elements. And these classes 
cover a wide range of CSS properties such as margins, paddings, typography, colors, and much, much, much more. Uh, and the sec and the third one, it's the I would say the last but not least, responsive design. Tailwind out of the box includes support for responsive design using some uh, prefixes like SM for small screens, MD, LG, XL, and so on. So especially mobile first approach will be really great with Tailwind CSS. Let's move on. And Prisma ORM. Prisma is an open source database that uh, is used in Node.js, TypeScript. So it simplifies the database access by providing some type safe and database agnostic way to interact with databases. So when combined with Next.js, Prisma can streamline the process of building full stack applications. And uh, here is how the Prisma RAM works with Next.js. Uh, some key features. First of all, it's the database access because uh, Prisma allows us to define database model using a declarative sy syntax in Prisma schema files. These models are then translated into database, uh, tables, queries, and so on. And Prisma supports various databases like uh, PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQLite, and so on. Uh, the second feature is the type safe queries, because with Prisma, you can write type safe querying using TypeScript. Prisma generates the client that provides auto completion. It's a TypeScript feature you may already know. Uh, also, type checking, ensuring that queries are type safe at compile time, and uh, reducing the likelihood of runtime errors. The third feature is the serverless functions. Again, Next.js supports serverless function, and uh, we can use alongside Prisma to create serverless API. So these serverless functions can interact with a database using Prisma generated client, providing a scalable and cost-effective solution for backend logic. And the last one, it's uh, authentication and uh, authorization. So Next.js application often require authentication and authorization functionalities. And Prisma can be used to manage user data and permissions in the database. Uh, so this allows us to implement authentication and authorization logic with Next.js easily and uh, without any, <laughs> any major efforts. And for authentication, I would recommend the next of so next of is an open source authentication library for next.js application and it simplifies the process of adding authentication to next.js project by providing a flexible easy to use authentication solution with support for various authentication providers and that's the first key feature providers because it supports a wide range of authentication providers out of the box, including all of uh, like Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and so more, Discord. Also, it supports email password authentication, Jot authentication, and custom authentication providers. So you can create something from scratch, something your own. <laughs> uh, the second feature is the session management. I would really highlight it because next of uh, handles sessions management, including the creation, validation, store, and uh, some manipulation with user session. So it provides hooks and utilities for managing sessions on the client and the server side, making it easy to implement authentication related functionalities in Next.js applications. Uh, Third feature is the serverless function support. Next of is, as it built for Next.js, of course, it supports the serverless functions. And uh, it allows authentication related logic to be, implement to be implemented within the API routes. 
which uh, with which we are already familiar. <clears throat> so this enables us to build serverless APIs with authentication functionalities using next of. The next one is the customization and flexibility. So next of is highly customizable and extensible, allowing us to tailor the application flow and uh, uh, how to how to say it correctly, maybe a better authentication experience because you do not um, want to create something something yours. You just use the logic that is highly performed and uh, prepared just for you. Also, it supports TypeScript. That's that's the great. Uh, yep. Uh, before I will finish, I will just take a look at the T3 stack application. It will be fast. So here's my T3 example. Here we have a lot of infrastructure and that all this infrastructure is built for you to build your own full stack application that uh, you can post uh, and for example in combination with next commerce it can be a really really great tool so here is our page here we have hello from the trpc i can go t3 example Dev and just show you the local host. So TRPC allows us to create some public and protected procedures, which we will use in our API to restrict some users from some actions and so on to add some roles and other other useful features. So here we just use the middleware, which checks our session and returns the unauthorized error called uh, TRPC error if the user is not authorized. So here I have to sign in, but I have uh, not configured the Discord provider. Uh, it's okay, we can just put it here that session user, we will not check the session. And without the user, and we will be able to interact with our entire application. So for example, I can create some post. The request is sent. It's type safety and uh, just safety into our network, because if you will see here, uh, um, I should uh, find the TRPC. So TRPC, we have uh, not the simple endpoint, but the uh, patch it with TRPC handler, which uh, totally secures our API calls. So that's that's the crucial feature. And uh, yeah. Also, to in addition, I managed to build my own uh, application using T3 stack and Next.js. So it's a set of marketing tools, for example, quiz builders and Amazon landings builders, so that uh, we can use to create my uh, our own quizzes, for example, and uh, all the features from Next.js, such as image optimization and so on. Uh, SSR features are used here, for example, tailwind for styling, for theming, so that's that's great. Through all the application, we can get the link and go to check the quiz and to complete it. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for attention, guys. Thank you, Miroslav. Uh, yeah, we a bit out of time, but uh, the, let's take a um, few minutes to answer the question in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I see. If backend already developed with, let's say, Python, Java, then React, JS is all right, right? If backend already developed with, say, Python, Java, then React. 
sorry, Dimitro, uh, maybe you can clarify uh, clarification. Uh, clarify, sorry, <laughs> your question. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I don't really get it. Uh, you maybe you want to say that if uh, we have backend already built on some of the languages, can we easily migrate it? Ah, oh, this is the first question. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Ah, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, I believe that next yes, it will be another just another simple way. For example. For me, as a front-end developer, it's really easy to take a look at Node.js code and to, to get more familiar with this. So if you are a front-end developer, you can use Next.js and uh, <laughs> to become a, a full-stack developer. 